This lumber's been drying up for several days now, and I think I'm ready to start rough cutting. While I was waiting for the lumber to dry up, and I finalized the plans for the project with the client. Developing a plan for a piece of custom furniture with a client is an iterative process. After a few iterations of passing pictures and plans back and forth, usually I'm able to work out what the client has in their head and get something that they desire. In this case, the client wanted a king size bed, a low mattress height, and he wanted to make sure that the backboard did not interfere with the window in the, in the wall behind. He also wants a dark rustic finish and uh, under the bed storage. Once the dimensions and style have been roughed out, I can get to work on the casework plan for the inside. Since this bed features under the mattress drawers, there's going to be a lot of casework that goes on underneath, and some of it's fairly complex. Now, king size beds are a pretty monstrous piece of furniture, and this one is no exception. I've managed to design it so that it breaks down into five separate pieces, not including the drawers. These will all be put together with bolts in the final project. Once the plan is built, I started developing a cut list from the lumber I had available, and uh, that's where we are now. The first step is to figure out which are the longest and most critical parts in the project. In this project, it's going to be the bed rails for the headboard and the footboard. I'm going to go through this lumber and find the best pieces of wood for those parts and rough cut them now. The reason why you want to do the largest pieces first is if you mess them up, the lumber is still useful to cut up into smaller pieces. As a general rule, you either want to cut those long pieces from the longest piece of wood you have available, or find a piece of wood that's almost exactly the right size. Working this way will minimize the scrap that you have at the end of the job. This is called a speed square. It's very useful. Besides a measuring device, and for checking angles, you can use it for cross-cutting wood quite easily. Once you have your boards rough cut to length, it's time to rough mill them to width. Now since I have electricity on this location, I'm going to be using a table saw for this job. Uh, you can still do this with a circular saw and it'll work just fine. This is just a little bit easier and a little bit faster. Once the most critical pieces have been rough cut to length and rough cut to width, put them back up and sticker them. You may want to let them sit an extra day, especially if your wood is a little bit fresh. I'm going to go on to the next most critical parts, which in this case are the rails that run along the side of the bed and form up part of the drawer carcasses that sit underneath. Once again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look for the best possible wood and rough cut those to length and width. Careful milling will make a real difference in the accuracy of your project. You'll notice this board has some natural cup to it because it's started to shrink. If I mill the board like this, I'm not going to get a right angle against the face of the board. But if I flip the board over, now I'll get a right angle. Pay attention to this when you're doing your milling especially when you're doing your rough milling. It'll make the next step that comes after this much easier. Now that I've rough milled up the most critical parts and the second most critical parts, well, there's really not too many long pieces of wood left. And that's a good thing because those short pieces don't have the same sensitivity to twist and warp as a long piece does. The next step for these boards is to let them sit. I want to know if they're going to warp or twist now that they've cut. And it's going to take at least 24 hours, if not longer, to know what's going to happen with these. So I've stickered them up, and I'm going to leave them here and work with them tomorrow or the next day. My next job is to cut the pieces I'm going to laminate together for the four corner posts. Now, for this job, I don't need the world's most dimensionally stable lumber. What I need is lumber that's flat right now so that I can laminate it together. Now, the lumber will move over time, but once it's laminated together, those movements tend to balance each other out, so I don't have to worry about that so much. So certain pieces of wood I'm going to want to avoid. 
like this one here has a little bit of a cut in it, a cup in it. And I got another one here where there's a saw mark on the top that's going to prevent these pieces from sitting flat against each other. I'm just going to go through this lumber, find the best pieces for that, rough cut them, and then we'll start the laminate. This is all the stock for the four posts. Now unlike the other wood, which I want to be more dry and more stable before I mill it, this is much more forgiving because it's going to be laminated up. Next I'm going to finish rough milling them and set them in the clamps. Gluing up stock is always a stressful time for a woodworker. If you want to see one get cranky, wait till he's gluing up and then start asking him questions. Take the time to prepare everything before you get started, because once that glue goes on the wood, the timer has started. Before you start the glue up, lay out all your stock carefully on a clean surface. Make sure that the grain patterns match. Make sure that all the joints are working. Set out all your clamps. Make sure that they're properly adjusted to the right width. Remember, you're going to need to protect the wood from the clamp surfaces. Somewhat less important in a distressed finish, but it's good practice anyway. If you're using a polyurethane glue, make sure you have water to wet down the wood. I never seem to have enough clamps, but this seemed to work out okay. I'm going to leave this and let it set up and maybe I'll go get some breakfast or something. The headboard rails and the footboard rails we laminated up together out of three pieces of stock. And those rails receive a panel. I suppose I could laminate that together into a solid square block and then cut out the dado afterwards, but I think it's going to be a lot more efficient if I just glue it up with a narrower piece of stock in the middle so that the dado is already in place. So I'll just keep on doing this until all of the rails and all of the columns for the bed are done. I'll get back to you later. That was a big glue up, almost a bottle and a half of glue. Anyway, I'll let these set up and then uh, when they're all dry, I'll clean them up. I'll pull all the extra screws out that I can because I used almost a whole box of screws in this as well. And uh, then we'll get ready to mill them so that they're square and straight. The headboard rails and columns are still hardening up, so I can't work with them yet. So I've started to rough cut the parts for the drawer carcasses that are supporting the bed underneath. Now, I can't emphasize enough. For a project like this, you need not only a good plan, but you need to work out your cut list. Now my cut list has each part labeled, how many I need, what the length of the part is, height and thickness of that piece is, and I also draw in a detailed drawing of the profile if it's anything other than rectangular. If you don't do this, you run the risk of cutting too many of the wrong part or cutting the parts the wrong sizes, and that can be expensive real fast. There's something of a uh, tradesman lost item theorem, and that is the amount of time it takes you to find your safety glasses is directly related to the amount of time it takes you to give up looking for them and get a replacement. right in front of me the whole time. The cabinet carcasses call for an awful lot of pieces of three inch wide stock and many of those pieces are only two feet or less. In terms of reducing waste, if I do my cross cutting first and then do my ripping, the leftover pieces will be nearly useless. That should be it for the night. You'll notice I've carefully stickered up all my lumber again. Remember this lumber is still drying out a bit. So you want to make sure it continues to dry evenly. Now these big posts like this, they're not going to move at all. But this three inch stock is quite susceptible still. I left all my small cabinet parts in the long. That way if I have any trouble with my uh, longs tomorrow, I'll just look through some of my other pieces and cut it out of there. In the meantime, I think I'm going to go make myself a hamburger.